Hello and welcome to another Taika video. This is a three-part series focused on a basic how-to guide for those who wish to export their measurements into the AAVSO format. The first part of this series is focused on how to generate a set of transformation coefficients. Now, while I have covered some of that material before in the past, I thought it would be useful to bring it up again as a sort of refresher for this topic. So if you're already familiar with how to do that, feel free to skip to part number two. And part number two is focused on how to work with an ensemble of comparison stars. Now this is actually pretty straightforward with other formats. However, the AAVSO format in particular has only just recently added the ability to work with an ensemble of comparison stars. In fact, this is actually new functionality that has just recently been added to the type of software. So this is new material. So if you are interested, and working with more than one comparison star, be sure to pay attention to part number two. And finally, part number three is focused on how to use stars from other catalogs, for example, the Atlas catalog. So for example, you might find yourself in a situation where you want to take measurements of a variable star, but the AABSO have yet to designate official comparison stars in the field surrounding that variable star. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you can use comparison stars from the Atlas catalog. So part number three is also uh, new material that I think will be useful, especially for those uh, who are in that situation or have found themselves in that situation where uh, there are no official AAVSO comparison stars uh, to use. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so how do we go about generating a set of transformation coefficients? And before we answer that question, we might want to take a step back and ask the question, why? Why do we care about transformation coefficients in the first place? And the answer to that is that every telescope, camera, and filter combination has slight variations in sensitivity and response. So these coefficients allow us to adjust for these differences and to bring the data in line with a standard photometric system. So that is the why. Now let's go back to how. How do we create these coefficients? And the way to do that is to look at a standard field. There are, in fact, a number of standard fields available. And the one that I have selected for this example is NGC 7790. In fact, you can see it here in the Tyco user guide. There is a section labeled Generate Transformation Coefficients. And in fact, there is also a data set available on the Tyco website associated with the standard field. So if you download that data set, you have access to the same images that I will be using throughout this tutorial video. So with that, I am going to go ahead and get started here with list add images. So I'm going to choose these five images available in that data set. Uh, these, these five images correspond to five different filters, uh, U filter, B filter, B, R, and I filter. The U filter is at 300 seconds in duration, whereas the other four filters are 60 seconds. And the reason for that is that the telescope is not very sensitive with the U filter. So you typically have to take a longer exposure uh, to achieve any meaningful signal to noise ratio. Now do keep in mind that it is not strictly necessary to image the standard field using all five filters. In fact, you only have to do that if you plan on using all five filters for subsequent measurements. But if you only plan to ever take measurements in the B and V filter, for example, then you only have to image the standard field using just the B and B filters. So that could make it even simpler for you to generate these transforms if you just have two filters to worry about. But for the sake of completeness, for this tutorial, I have included all five uh, filters. Now, I will also point out that uh, these images have already been calibrated. So that part of the data reduction process can be skipped. But if you're working with your own images, it's always a good idea to apply the calibration routine. And the way to do that is to go to Action, Calibrate Images. And uh, the user guide has more information on that as well. So having already calibrated these images, uh, the next two steps are plate solving and alignment. So go to action, plate solve images, and specify the settings appropriate uh, for these images. Then I click start. 
and I give it a moment here to complete the plate solve operation. And you can see that it has found the solution, verifying the solution, and now it has completed. So now we go to the next step, which is alignment. So we go to action, align images. I click OK here. And once this step has completed, then we can go to action, view images. And as you can see here, uh, this is the standard field. And the way to see that more clearly is we can go to photometry, standard fields, and you can see that it has highlighted all of the stars in that standard field. In fact, it has also automatically recognized that this image is associated with NGC 7790. Now the next step is to validate the measuring aperture. The way to do that is to go to photometry, modify aperture settings. And as I zoom in here, you can see the three concentric circles here corresponding to the inner radius dead zone and sky annulus and all we have to do here is to overlay the aperture on top of stars that will be in the standard field and make sure that it is sized appropriately so as you can see I've chosen nine pixels for the inner radius nine pixels for the dead zone and nine pixels for the sky annulus and so all you have to do is adjust these settings as appropriate uh, for your set of images. So once we've done that, the next step is to create measurements of the stars in this standard field. So we can go to photometry, generate transforms, and you can see there are two drop down boxes here. The first one corresponds to the five different filters we have available, or in some cases, if you're just working with B and B filter, it might only have just those two options. And the next drop down here has options for each of the possible magnitude bands. And you can see that these two drop down boxes, they should be in agreement with each other. So measurements and the U filter should correspond to the U magnitude band. Measurements and the B filter should correspond to measurements and the B magnitude band. So once you have those in agreement, you can click on create measurements and what you can see here is that having done that it has created measurements out of the U filter. I repeat that same process for the other filters and so you can see I selected the B filter and it automatically selected the B magnitude band. I click on create measurements and now I have measurements populated in this list corresponding to the B filter. And again repeat the same process for the other filters. So now I have five sets of measurements corresponding to the five different filters. Now that we've done that, we can go to Transforms, Generate from Measurements, and we are presented with a new window here. The graph on the right presents a trend line with data points corresponding in this case to the U minus B and that's in capital letters and lowercase u minus b. So the capital letters indicate the reference or true magnitude and the lowercase letter indicates the instrument magnitude. Now you might see here this looks like a, an outlier data point so we can drag a rectangle around it to select it and then right click and choose deactivate. And when we do that the trend line tightens up and the r squared value approaches closer to 1. And you can repeat the same process with the other pairs of filters. So we have B minus V. I can select this data point, deactivate it. We have a nice tight trend line here. V minus R. V minus I, that already looks pretty good here. And finally, R minus I. So once we have done that, then we could proceed to generate the transform coefficients. Now, before I do that, I also want to point out some of the settings here. These are actually filters. So if I wanted to, I could include more data points. In fact, I might want to do that for the U minus B. You can see here the min SNR filter. If I drop that down to 25 and click on refresh filter, you can see we have now additional data points. 
And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it might make the data or the overall presentation noisier. But I'm just pointing that out here that that is an option to adjust this threshold as desired. Now, if I drop it down to five, what does that look like? That may or may not be a good thing. That may include data points that have too much noise in them. Uh, so for example, if I go to the B minus V pair, and I choose min SNR of five there, then you have that sort of presentation. So again, it's entirely up to you, but uh, once you've made the settings as desired, you can click on generate transformation coefficients, and now you have the report. So we have a description, followed by the coefficients, followed by the error measurements, and finally the R-squared values. And this report, you can go to File, Save to save the report. And again, these are what, the values that we actually care about. These are the coefficients uh, for each of the filter pairs. So that is, in a nutshell, how you generate transformation coefficients. So that's about it for this video. I want to thank you for watching and see you next time.